chapter 4 is about recognizing a firm's intellectual asset, moving beyond a firm tangible resources. After reading this chapter, you should have a good understanding of why the management of knowledge professionals and knowledge itself are so critical in today's organization. The importance of recognizing the interdependence of attracting, developing and retaining human capital. The key role of social capital in leveraging human capital within and across the firm. The importance of social network in knowledge management and in promoting career success, the vital role of technology in leveraging knowledge and human capital, why electronic or virtual teams are critical in combining and leveraging knowledge in organizations, and how they can be made more effective, and finally the challenge of protecting intellectual property and the importance of firms' dynamic capabilities. The importance of intellectual asset. In the knowledge economy, it does not matter how big your uh, stock of resources is, whether it be top talent, physical resources, or financial capital. Rather, the question becomes how good is the organization at attracting top talent and leveraging that talent to produce a stream of product and services valued by the marketplace. So, uh, human capital is the foundation of intellectual capital, but the attraction, development and retention of human capital is necessary, but not sufficient condition for organizational success. Social capital, the appropriate use of technology and protection of physical and intellectual property are also critical. Knowledge economy is an economy where wealth is created through the effective management of knowledge workers instead of by the efficient control of physical and financial asset. So investing in a company is in essence buying a set of talent, capability, skill and ideas, intellectual capital, it's not physical and financial resources. Intellectual capital is the difference between the market value of the firm and the book value of the firm, including assets such as reputation, employee, employee loyalty and commitment, customer relationships, company values, brand names, and the experience and skills of the employees. You have to take note that the market value of a firm is equal to the value of a share of its common stock times the number of shares outstanding. So the book value of a firm is uh, primarily a measure of the value of its tangible asset. So it can be calculated by the formula total asset minus the total liability. So how do uh, companies create value in the knowledge intensive economy? The general answer is to attract and leverage human capital, which is intangible asset effectively through mechanism that create product and services of value over time. Human capital involves the individual capabilities, knowledge, skills and experience of the company employees and managers. So this knowledge uh, is relevant to the task at hand as well as the capacity to add to this reservoir of knowledge, skills and experience through learning. So human capital is uh, the foundation of intellectual capital and intellectual, uh, intellectual capital is uh, developed uh, through attracting, developing and retaining the human capital. So success in retaining human capital could also be attributed to the nurturing of the social ties or social capital. So social capital is a function of the network of relationships that individuals have uh, throughout the organization. So relationships are actually critical in sharing and leveraging knowledge and in acquiring resources. Social capital can extend uh, beyond the organizational boundaries to include relationship between the firms and its suppliers, customers and alliance partners. So if employees are working effectively in teams across business division and share their knowledge and learning from each other, 
So not only will they be more likely to add value to the firm, but they also will be less likely to leave the organizations. The knowledge include the explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge, where the explicit knowledge is a codified, documented, easily reproduced and widely distributed, where tacit knowledge is in the minds of employee based on their experience and the background. Human capital. Uh, the organization must recruit talented employee at all levels with the proper sets of skills and capabilities together with the right values and attitude. Uh, this skill must be continually developed, strengthened and reinforced and each employee must be motivated and his or her effort to focus on the organization goals and objective. Human capital is habit, knowledge, social and personality attributes, uh, which includes creativity, embodied in the ability to perform labor, so as uh, to produce economic value. Human capital is uh, unique and differ from any other capital. It is needed for companies to achieve goals, uh, develop and remain innovative. So companies can invest in human capital, for example, through education and training. So enable uh, improve level of quality and production. So under the human capital, we are going to look at the attracting human capital and how we develop the human capital and also how to retain the human capital. Attracting human capital. So the first step in building superior human capital is input control, which is attracting and selecting the right person. Some human uh, resource uh, professionals argue that firms can identify top performers by focusing on key employee mindsets, attitudes, social skills, and general orientation. So if they get, uh, get this element right, then the tax specific skill can be learned quickly. Companies that take hiring uh, seriously must also take the recruiting uh, employee seriously. And the challenge becomes having the right job candidate, not the greatest number of them. Developing human capital. The process of uh, developing human capital requires creating the necessary environment in which employees can learn better and apply innovative ideas, acquire new competencies, develop skill, behaviors, and attitudes. So the tools uh, can be used. The tools that can be used for creating these opportunities uh, mostly include training, facilitation, coaching, and consulting. Uh, we can use the mentoring and sponsoring lower level employees as well. So mentoring means uh, we can transfer the knowledge from upper level managers to the lower level employees or to the new comers. However, uh, the uh, progress need to be monitored and the development uh, should be monitored as well so uh, the, the knowledge can be shared among the employees or the managers in the organization. So we can use the 360 degree to get the evaluation and feedback uh, from the employees. Retaining the human capital. Uh, leaders actually can build strong relationship with followers by instituting a corporate culture that reward clearly and equitably. For example, including employees in the decision-making process or using their input when creating recognition program or project assignments. Leaders uh, who put into effect supportive practices will have a positive influence on their employees' behavior toward the organization. For example, help the employees to identify within an organization missions and values, provide them with challenging work and a stimulating environment. Also, uh, to keep them in the company so uh, the managers or the leaders or the company itself can have a uh, offer on the financial and 
non-financial reward or incentive to the employees. But we have to remember that the financial uh, reward is not uh, actually the most important reason why people take or leave the job. So investment and management in management and employee training and recognition of effort will increase the retention of employee. Enhancing human capital. Some firms are taking steps to expand their talent pool. Uh, for example, by investing in apprenticeship and other training programs. Uh, and some of uh, the company even going further. They are redefining the job of the experts and transferring some of their tasks to lower skill people inside or outside their companies. Eh? As well as uh, outsourcing the work that require less uh, skills and if it is not as strategically important. So uh, redefining high value knowledge job not uh, only uh, would help organization address skill shortages but also can lower cost and enhance the job satisfaction. So to break high-end knowledge work into highly specialized pieces involves several processes which includes identifying the gap between the talent your firm has and what requires creating narrower, more focused job description in areas where talent is uh, selecting from various options to fill the skill gap and rewiring processes for talent and knowledge management. A combination of a demographic trend and accelerating globalization of business has made the management of cultural differences a critical issue. So a workforce which reflect the demographic changes in the overall population will increase uh, the heterogeneous long dimensions such as gender, race, ethnicity and nationality. Such uh, demographic changes have implication not only for the labor pool but also for customer bases eh? so which also uh, becoming more diverse. So this uh, will create important organization organizational challenges and opportunities. So the effective uh, management of diversity can enhance the social responsibility goals of an organization. However, uh, there are few uh, other benefits uh, that uh, can uh, be contributed to the uh, effective management. Other areas that where a uh, diverse workforce can improve an organization effectiveness and uh, competitive advantages are uh, lower cost, better reputation, leading the resource acquisition, marketing sensitivity to client cultures, creativity through diversity of perspective, better problem solving and greater organizational flexibility. What is social capital? In the simple definition, it is actually referred to the human interaction. So the positive outcome may be tangible or intangible. And uh, maybe it is include useful information, uh, innovative ideas and future opportunities. So it can be used to describe the contribution to an organization success that can be attributed to personal relationship and networks both within and also outside of the organization so it can also be used to describe the personal relationship within a company that uh, can help to build trust and respect among the employees and this actually will lead to the to enhance the company performance so social capital actually allows a group of people to work together effectively to achieve a common purpose of common purpose or goal. So <clears throat> it's allowed a society organization such as corporation or a non-profit to function together as whole through trust and as a whole eh, through trust and shared identity, norms, value and mutual relationship. 
So successful, uh, successful firms well aware that the attraction, development, and retention of talent is necessary, but uh, not sufficient uh, condition for creating the competitive advantages. In the knowledge economy, it is not the stock of human capital that is important, but the extent to which it is combined and leverage. So the development of social capital, uh, which is actually the relationship between the uh, office workers, okay, uh, among your colleagues, right? So this will help to tie the knowledge workers to a given firm. So the competitive advantage uh, tend to be harder for competitors to copy if they are based on unique bundles of resources. So if employees are working effectively in teams and share their knowledge and learn from each other. So not, this will not only uh, be, I mean, add value to the firm, but also will be uh, a reason for the employee not to leave the organization uh, since they are more loyal and uh, already have a, a positive relationship with the other employees. In an organization, uh, basically employees are working effectively in teams and uh, share their knowledge and learning from each other. Not only this will bring uh, or to add value to the firm, but they also will be likely uh, not to leave the organization because they are already loyal to the organization and uh, have the social ties uh, among the employees uh, that they have developed uh, over time actually. So mm -hmm. how this social capital have attract and retain talent? Uh, so by hiring personal a uh, true personal uh, network for example the some job candidate may bring other talent with them okay um, let's see uh, 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 this is what we call the pipe piper effect when uh, you have been selected and uh, what we call appointed by one company and uh, after a few months maybe you will ask your friend to follow you to the same company that you are currently working now so that is what we call pipe piper effect okay and uh, this actually um, the teams or network of people are leaving uh, one company for another company right so it normally in in group okay uh, one will follow another one right and um, this is actually uh, what we call a process that refer to hiring uh, employee via personal network okay another example that uh, we can uh, use of social relationship causing the human capital mobility is the uh, immigration of talent uh, from an organization to form startup venture. Uh, if you, if we can take uh, Microsoft employee as an example, where the professional in a Microsoft company has uh, started up a new company. For example, um, the Ignition Corporation it was formed by Brett Silverberg, a former Microsoft senior vice president. Okay. And uh, another thing that the social uh, network can provide a mechanism for obtaining resources and information from outside the organization. The managers face uh, many challenges driven by such factors as rapid changes in the globalization and technology. So leading a successful company is more than a one person job so uh, you as a managers uh, need to shift the thinking of uh, from command and control to coordinate and uh, cultivate the best way to gain power which sometimes you need to give away the power so to move away from top-down uh, bureaucratic control to more open uh, which is uh, decentralized but the uh, decentralized network model make it uh, difficult for managers to understand how work is actually getting done. So uh, who is inter interacting with whom uh, both within and uh, outside the organization and the consequences of this interaction for the long term health of the 
organization. If you look at the social network uh, analysis, it depicts the pattern of interaction among individuals and helps to diagnose the effective and ineffective pattern. So uh, it helps uh, to identify group or cluster of individuals that comprise the network, individuals who link the cluster and other network members. So it helps uh, to diagnose communication pattern and consequently uh, communication effectiveness. Such analysis of communication pattern um, is helpful because the configuration of members' uh, social ties within and outside the group affect the extent to which members connect to individuals, uh, which uh, convey needed resources, exchange uh, information and support, have the motivation uh, to treat each other in positive way and have the time to develop trusting relationship that might improve the group effect. However, this uh, relationship, uh, uh, to make it happen, uh, you uh, need to look at how developing social capital require uh, interdependence among the group members. The social cap uh, capital erodes when people in the network become independent and increase interaction between members aid in the development and maintenance of mutual obligation in a social network. So social networks such as Facebook for example may facilitate increased interaction between members in a social network via internet-based internet connection. Example social network analysis. In this diagram, links are used to describe informal relationship between individual involving communication flow, personal support, and advice network. Uh, there may be some individual who have basically no contact, such as uh, in this situation, Fred. Fred got no connection with others. These individuals are typically term isolated. Um, however, most people have interconnection with others. There are two uh, primary types of structure through which a social capital flow. One is the final relationship uh, shown by Bill, Frank, George and Susan with one member. is central to communication flow in a group and a bridge relationship represented by Mary which where one person uh, bridges or bring together group that uh, may have been unconnected. Social network analysis. Both uh, closure and uh, bridging relationship have important implication for the effective flow of information in organization and uh, for the management of knowledge. Closure is the degree to which all members of the social network have relationship, means tie with uh, other group members. Through uh, closure, group members develop strong relationship with each other. So high level of trust and greater unity. Bridging, uh, bridging relationship is relationship in a social network that connect otherwise disconnected people. So employees who bridge uh, disconnected people tend to receive timely diverse information because of their access to, to a wide range of uh, heterogeneous information flow. Where structural hole is a social gaps between groups in a social network where uh, there are few relationship bridging the groups. Eh? For example, sales and engineering are two groups where members traditionally, traditionally uh, uh, normally interact more with uh, their peers than across group boundaries. Implication for career success through social network. So private information is the information that is not available from public sources and usually communicated in the context of personal relationship whereby the public information is uh, information that is available from public sources such as the internet. So success is also tied to the ability to overcome natural skill limitation through others. So training information 
or skill with people whose experience differ from your own uh, will provide you with unique, exceptionally valuable resources. You can also gain power by being a network broker or by someone who bridges multiple networks. So, network broker can adapt to changes in the organization, uh, can uh, develop clients and uh, analyze the opposing viewpoint. So, brokers are particularly powerful because they connect uh, separate uh, clusters. Uh, this, uh, this stimulates uh, collaboration even among the independent specialists. And the effective social network uh, provide advantages for the firm and for an individual career advancement. For example, to access to private information communicated in the context of personal relationship, access to diverse skills, and access to power. Social capital. Uh, potential downside. Eh? The social capital does have some potential downside. Uh, which uh, group thing? Group thing is a tendency in an organization for individuals not to question shared belief. Group thing may occur in network with high level of closure where there is little input from people outside of the network. So if uh, there are deep rooted mindset, there could be a tendency to develop dysfunctional human resource practices. The organization could continue to hire, reward and uh, promote like-minded people who tend to further intensify the organizational initial and erode the innovation. So, social, uh, socialization processes such as orientation and uh, training can be expensive in terms of both financial resources and managerial commitment. So, a cost-benefit uh, analysis is encouraged to, to be done. So individuals uh, may also use the contact they develop to pursue their own interests and agenda in ways that may be inconsistent with the organization goals and objective. So this uh, is actually engaging in unethical or illegal acts. So this is actually related to chapter 9 where content discussion of uh, behavioral control mechanism that reduce such dysfunctional behavior and action. Using technology to leverage human capital and knowledge. Uh, sharing knowledge and information throughout the organization uh, can be a way of maintaining resources, improving goods and services, and generating new opportunities. And uh, technology can be used to exploit uh, human resources and expertise within companies as well as with consumers and suppliers outside the uh, outside your boundaries. Networks and electronic teams share information and enhance collaboration. So email is an effective means of communicating a wide variety of information. It is a quick, easy and almost uh, costless. However, it can be excessive and embarrassing if one is not careful. Electronic teams is a team of individuals that complete tasks primarily through email communication. However, this uh, such team require members who can identify um, those among them with the most appropriate knowledge and resources and uh, members need to know how to combine the individual contribution in the most effective manner for a uh, coordinated and appropriate response. So, uh, process, uh, process losses uh, prevent teams from achieving high level of performance because of inefficient interaction uh, process among team members. Codifying knowledge for competitive advantage. Uh, tacit knowledge and explicit knowledge. Eh? Tacit knowledge is uh, embedded in personal experience and shared only with the consent and participation of the individual. However, explicit knowledge uh, is knowledge that can be documented, widely distributed and easily replicated. 
So one of the challenges of uh, knowledge intensive organization is to capture and codify the knowledge and experience that uh, in effect reside in the head of its employees. You may refer to Spotlight 4.5 from your tech for how SAP has been able to leverage the expertise and involvement of its users to develop the new knowledge and transmit it to uh, SAP's entire user community. Protecting the intellectual assets. Firms can use technology, attract human capital or tap into research and design network to get access to information. However, employees can become dissatisfied uh, and pattern uh, may be expired. So where is the firm's sustainable competitive advantage then? So we look at the inter intellectual property right. It is the intangible property owned by a firm in the forms of patent, copyright, trademarks or trade secrets. So protecting a firm intellectual property require uh, coordinated effort on the part of the company. So effective protection of intellect, uh, intellectual property is uh, necessary before any investor will finance such as a complicated project. So intellectual property is characterized by significant development costs and very low marginal costs. So once developed through the uh, once developed, uh, the reproduction and distribution costs uh, or variable costs may be almost zero. Protecting uh, intellectual asset through dynamic capabilities. Dynamic capability is the capacity of a company to develop and maintain a competitive advantage based on expertise, asset, competencies, complementary asset and technologies. So dynamic capabilities include the ability to recognize and take advantage of new opportunities, create new information and reorganize the existing assets and capability. So dynamic capabilities can be one of the uh, strongest ways organization or firm can defend its intellectual property. Dynamic capabilities are connected to the company entrepreneurial side and are developed and is developed within the company by means of its environmental and technological signaling system. So its organizational form choices and its collective strategic capability. So dynamic skills are about an organization ability to question traditional thinking within its industry and market. So learn and innovate, adapt to the changing environment and can generally adopt new approaches to meet the emerging needs of the market. In summary, intellectual asset or intangible resources are critical to the organizational success. So the growing importance of knowledge coupled with move by labor market to reward knowledge work tells us that investing in a company is in essence uh, buying a set of talent, capability, skills and idea, ideas. Uh, the intellectual capital, not the physical and financial resources. Uh, you can look at uh, Exhibit 4.5 where a few issues to consider in creating value to human capital, social capital and technology. You have to look at the uh, where human capital, uh, for example, does the organization effectively attract, develop and retain talent and does the organization value diversity. If you look at the social capital, you have to think of does the organization have positive personal and professional relationship among employee and do the uh, social network within the organization have the appropriate level of closure and bridging relationship. And in terms of uh, technology, uh, does the organization effectively use technology to transfer best practices across the organization, codified knowledge and develop dynamic capabilities for competitive advantage. With that, I end the chapter 4.